Good day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Over the last few weeks, I've been releasing a multi-part tutorial covering my VFX short, The Spheres, breaking down each scene, showing you the techniques, products, and plugins I used to make a VFX composition that is achievable and convincing. As we saw in part one, two, and three, which are available on my channel right now, compositing is accessible. I covered techniques like motion tracking, color grading, keying and rotoscoping, and plenty of small tips and tricks that can help you achieve something that looks pro in After Effects without feeling overwhelmed. You can watch part one, two, and three via the playlist up here or in the description below, but let's get into the one you guys have been waiting for, part four. Here we are within After Effects, your happy place. I'm really excited about today's tutorial. This is part four, scene four, from my VFX short, The Spheres. So over the last few weeks, we did part one, which was um, quite basic, just slight handheld movement, um, a nice little scene revealing our sphere in the backdrop there. Then we moved on to part two, which is a little bit more tricky. We talked a little bit about keying and, and track mats, alpha mats, optical flares. And then part three, we looked a little bit more in depth into mocha motion tracking, that handheld shot, which was a little bit more tricky than the first two parts. And now we come to part four, the one a lot of you have been waiting for, and we have a lot to cover here today. So before we get started, these are the plugins and products required for this tutorial. Now, obviously I can't provide you with the file for this project because I'd be breaking some copyright rules. <laughs> um, so hopefully this list as well as all my instruction gives you enough info for you to be able to uh, create the scene for yourself. So first up, Element 3D. If you're looking for the links to these, all in the description below. Um, secondly, Saber, which is free. Optical Flares, it's a paid plugin. Action VFX. Um, which is a stock footage website. Action Essentials, optional for that one. Um, it's an older pack, but it's still pretty good. Big Films, Lumen, which I've talked about in the previous tutorials, um, and that's optional as well. So let's talk through what's gonna happen today. We're gonna talk about the background scene, so choosing a scene to start with. I'm gonna talk about how to actually make the sphere in Element 3D, how to texture it, how to get the environmental reflection looking good, lighting, ambient inclusion, glow. I'm gonna go really in depth into Element 3D. Obviously I haven't covered it in my previous tutorials, but now is when we learn how to use Element 3D and how to make that 3D sphere within After Effects. Then we're gonna talk about Saber. Saber is a free plugin from videocopilot.net that will allow us to create that massive tractor beam that comes down from the sphere. Then we'll talk about stock footage, specifically Action VFX, which is a website that you can sign up and get a subscription and you get a certain number of downloads for stock footage like explosions, um, electricity, fire, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so I'll provide an extended breakdown of what that actually looks like within my composition and how I stack those layers on top of each other to create that realistic looking uh, dust explosion. I'll then talk about Optical Flares, which is a paid plugin from videocopilot.net. Then we'll render that scene and bring it back in and create that handheld camera look. Now the rendering will be an optional step. For me, I do a high quality pre-render just to help my computer not chug along too much uh, when I get towards the end of the project. So we're gonna get that handheld camera look on there um, as well as the micro jitters that happen during the explosion. And then we'll finish off with some color noise and some final touches um, to really bring this scene together. This is gonna be a massive one today, guys. Let's get started. All right, so the first major thing I wanna talk about is the background scene. Part one, two, three, they were all based on video footage. Okay, so you gotta track the video footage to place your items in there. Um, you gotta match it all. This one, we're actually using a still image as the background plate. Now, how do we make that look alive? Main thing that I've added in here is a handheld, a fake handheld look for the camera. That's how you get away with using a still. There are plenty of other things you can do as well. But yeah, that's what I've chosen for this scene. I've chosen to use a still image and I'll show you how to bring that to life. So let's get started guys. I'm gonna bring in my background shot here. I'm just gonna right click that, transform fit to comp width. Um, and then I'm just gonna scale that to 60. So where do I get images like this? 
There are lots of good websites, but I like to use Pexels for a lot of my stock imagery. If you just type in blue sky, you can see a bunch of great images um, that you can use for free without paying. Um, obviously have a look at the attribution of each photo, but generally um, the attribution states that you can use it for commercial purposes and you don't have to attribute the artist's name. Always good to attribute the artist's name, of course, if you can. So this is the image that I used. Um, from Pixabay, free to use and no attribution required. So that's the image I got there, download it straight away and it's a pretty good high quality image. Pop it straight into After Effects. So here we go. And let's just quickly analyze the scene. It seems like the sun is relatively high in the sky. So maybe just after midday. It's quite warm the shot with a nice brown field here and nice scattered cloud. But, um, but yeah, overall, nice image. I'll go down to about, I'll give myself a little bit more room, go down to about 50. So the more room you give yourself here, later on in the process when we're doing the handheld movement, um, we'll probably lose, you know, a little significant percentage of that shot just to get that handheld movement in there. So be aware of that. Give yourself enough space for that handheld movement. Okay, guys, that is our background plate. Now let's dive straight into uh, using Element 3D. So Element 3D available via the link in my description below. It is a advanced 3D object and particle render engine for After Effects created by videocopilot.net. If you don't know videocopilot.net, they are basically, or Andrew Kramer is the pioneer of online VFX um, tutorials, in my opinion. He's probably the reason why I got into VFX compositing when I was younger um, and why I wanted to study this sort of stuff in university. So the plugin itself costs 199 US dollars, uh, 100% worth it if this is something that you want to do. Um, the rendering engine is super realistic, uh, especially if you pair it with something like um, optical flares. But yeah, this is a great plugin and I'm gonna cover actually how to create that 3D sphere of ours with an After Effects using Element 3D. But yeah, guys, hit the link below if you want to explore it um, or if you're not ready and you can watch the product tour and the product reveal and everything that they have to say here on the site. 100% um, worth it. Grab it if you can. How do we use Element 3D? Layer, new, solid. And we'll just call this, make sure that solid is the comp size and we'll call this Element 3D. Click on that layer, come up here to your search bar, type in Element 3D and you can drag that across onto your layer. Element 3D, there we have it. This is the plugin here. Um, if you click on the scene setup button, that'll take you to the actual user interface of the plugin itself. So this is the actual interface of Element 3D. We've got a little preview window here, our materials, our scene, and our model browser over here. How Element 3D works is you set up your model in here, you press OK, and then you can adjust and play with it within the plugin within After Effects. So how did I create this sphere? with a little tractor beam thingo down the bottom. Well, it's actually really, really simple. If you come to V1 models in your model browser over here and come down to primitives, you want the sphere HD. So I wouldn't adjust anything in terms of the location of the sphere. I would leave it exactly where it was when you first spawned it in. Then I'll come down to the pro shaders, um, translucent, and the texture that I used for it was crystal raw. So if you click and drag that onto your item, boom, there it is. So you can come in here, click on crystal raw, and you can actually adjust the different properties of the texture itself. You can really go in here and get the depth, but we're not gonna change too much because I'm happy with the texture itself there. So just one note as well with these pro shaders, you will need to purchase the pro shader pack. Um, there is actually a bundle where you can get Element 3D plus the pro shader pack. I would highly recommend that. Um, if you want these awesome shaders. So I'm happy with my sphere. Now I want to add in that little tractor beam down the bottom. So for this, I used the motion design pack, which is part of the motion design bundle. Um, again, that comes with pro shaders, which you want with the plugin, with some extra light maps as well, which is cool, and the motion design uh, models themselves. With that, you got all these awesome little models, all kinds of buttons, capsules, chains, crystals, grills, gaskets, some really cool models that you can um, put Element 3D through its paces. Look at this, this is pretty cool. Liquid splashes and stuff. 
really cool. You can just start thinking what you can do with these models. So the one we're gonna use is under Mac and it's called the Mac Spotlight. So you click it, it brings it into your scene and we can just hide the Sphere HD for a second there. There we go, there it is. So we're gonna to wanna to make this just a little bit smaller. So scale it down and then we're just gonna rotate the um, X orientation completely around 180 degrees. And then we're gonna bring it down and turn the Sphere HD back on. Let's see where it is. Yep, need to bring it further down. So there it is now popping out the bottom. So it is perfectly centered because we didn't move the sphere initially and we didn't move this left or right. So bring it down a little bit further just so the top edge pokes into the sphere like that. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna play around with the materials a little bit here. I'm gonna change this top one to metal black. Um, and then I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change this next one to fogged glass. All right, so we've created our sphere, we've created the tractor beam element down the bottom, and we've made sure that the textures on those two are the ones that we want. Happy with that. Now, if you press this environment button, it'll show you what element 3D is using to reflect out of your image. So if you see here, this is one of the presets that they give, uh, that, they, that are included. So if you click on this here, and load from file, it takes you to your Video Copilot environment folder. And what that has is a bunch of different environments which you can use to act as a reflection off of your item. So there's little cityscapes, there's um, parking lots, tunnels. So that's that one there. Let's just use this cityscape one for now. And you can see the reflection on the item changes. So basically this environment is being used as the reflection on the item. And and the thing that will really help sell your 3D object is this reflection. So we need an environment map that looks like our scene. So if we press OK here, and if we, there's our object, obviously does not look like it belongs there at all. <laughs> the reflection looks wrong, the lighting is wrong. We've got a way to go, right? So let's talk a little bit about this environment map. Let's pick one um, that will actually fit a little bit better. All right, this is where I get my HDRIs. These are all free to use. Um, it's called polyhaven.com and there's a whole section for HDRIs. So I have to come through here, scroll through and find an environment that looks like my scene here. It's a relatively dried out ground and a nice blue cloudy sky. So let's take a look. Let's see what we've got here. Mm, that gets pretty close. This one looks pretty good. Rural landscape. This one looks pretty good. I'm gonna click on that. Thank you, Sergey Majbroda. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the HDR file, so make sure you select that. And we can just select the 2K textures, download that, and just save it where you can find it. Jump back into After Effects, uh, back into your plugin, click on Environment, and then we're gonna go ahead and load in that HDR file into the project. There we go, there we have it. Um, I would probably just adjust these slightly. All right, guys, so we've made our model, we've textured it. Uh, we have done our tractor beams on the bottom there, textured that, and then we've added our environmental map there uh, as well. Let's press OK. First problem, obviously, looks way too bright, um, as well as the reflection is flipped. So now we're gonna position the object in our world, we're gonna rotate the environment, and then we're gonna add the animated rotation of the sphere that we can see in scene four. Just quickly look back at the Element 3D interface. You can see here that this group is labeled one. So that means that is part of group one. So keep that in mind. Over here, group one, those are the settings we wanna change for this specific model. So under particle replicator, this is where you can move your object. So you can move it up or down um, in 3D space. You can move it in Z space. Okay, so that has to do with the positioning um, of the item itself within a 3D space and the rotation as well there. Then if you close that up, come to particle look, you can then specifically change the size of the item within 3D space. So again, you won't lose quality and you're just adjusting the size of it. So let's just bring that up a little bit here. That looks pretty good. Come on to particle replicator and move that up slightly, a little bit higher, and then it's rotated out slightly. That looks pretty good there. Position the item roughly where we want it. Now let's just adjust the environmental reflection. So come down here to render settings. We'll be living here a little bit in this tutorial. And under physical environment, 
you can come in here and rotate the environment itself. So as you can see, you can rotate it around that HDRI that we have. Um, so we want it to flip, obviously. So let's just rotate the oh, x-axis. That's bringing the blue sky up. And you can see that we now have the sky up there and the ground down there. So that's looking pretty good, happy with that. And if you feel like, you know, the sun's too bright there, for example, you can bring it around and have the reflection like that. So that looks pretty cool. So now that we have our model in there and we're happy with uh, how the reflection looks, how the environment is set up, I do want to animate that initial rotation. So if we just come to our original one here, you can see that it just slightly rotates slowly like an ominous spacecraft um, as we go through the scene. So let's add that in there. The beginning of your shot, click on Element 3D, and we wanna come down to Group 1, like I said, and if you go to Particle Replicator and animate um, that rotation, it's not going to uh, rotate it the way we want to rotate it, right? We've positioned it using the Particle Replicator rotation. I'm going to close that, come to Particle Look and Particle Rotation. Then we can start playing with the Y rotation and it's going to animate along itself there. Let's change that to zero. Do a keyframe on our Y rotation. Move forward to 12 seconds in the composition and let's rotate it by 180 degrees. And let's see if we play that back. It's a bit too fast for my liking. And we've animated from zero degrees to 50 degrees. Let's just play that back. Much happier with that nice slow rotation. And we can see the environment reflecting in the sphere itself. Now we're gonna talk about lighting. So we've rotated our environment to get the nice blue sky in there. And we've animated our slow, ominous rotation. So close your particle look here, close group one and come down to render settings, close physical environment and come down to lighting, open up lighting. And what this allows you to do, basically element 3D says, okay, you can create your own 3D lights within your composition and you can do your lighting that way, or you can use the built-in plugin lighting. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna come in here, add lighting, and you'll be able to go through here and see some lights that create different reflections, only slight differences here and there. Um, sunset, basic, uh, 360. And then you can come in here to additional lighting, increase the brightness of those that lighting, and also, most importantly, rotate that lighting. You can see there. So it really starts becoming a, a very helpful tool to help you blend your 3D object into your scene far better. So this is just a case of experimenting with what you think firstly looks realistic, but secondly also looks good. So just as an example, this 360 additional lighting, does it look realistic? No, there's one, two, three, four speculars there that are different colors. There's nothing within our scene here that should be reflecting the type of light onto our object. But it does look cool and sci-fi, so you could maybe use it as an effect. That could be an effect that happens on the spacecraft. And there's all kind of things you can think about to use this additional lighting to your advantage. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come down and pick dark. I think that's the one I went with with the original. And then I'm gonna rotate my lighting here. I'm gonna say that the sun is up here. So that's where our additional lighting is gonna be. And I'm gonna increase the brightness there. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that looks there. And you can see as the model rotates, it'll also, you know, it'll react to that light and those reflections that you have set up in your environment there. It's all coming together pretty nicely here, but there's probably about three or four more things here that I'd like to add to really make this pop. So firstly, come down here to ambient occlusion under your render settings and enable ambient occlusion. For the lack of actual shadows, this creates those dark little crevice shadows that you can see in various 3D models. So if I zoom in here, you can see that our two models look a little bit separate. If you enable ambient occlusion um, and just increase that intensity, you can see that it starts creating a nice natural shadows that feel like they should exist there between the gaps of the uh, model. If you increase the intensity and decrease the radius, you'll see that it creates some real nice shadows that really make that pop and feel like that model should be there. It has a bit of a shadow against itself and the model above it. 
um, that really helps things blend in. So yeah, make sure you turn on ambient occlusion and play with those settings there as well. Then we've got glow. This is probably the most important, I think. It looks the coolest. It really helps you blend this item in there. Obviously with a large scale object like this massive UFO, this massive sphere, it might be off in the distance slightly. And like with our other tutorials, we want to blend it into the background a little bit, right? And this is part of what will help do that. This item can't just be so clean and nice here in the sky. It needs some sort of glow that will make it uh, feel like it belongs in this environment. So go ahead and enable glow and you'll see that it doesn't actually do much. It's just lighting up the bottom, the tractor beam there, okay? So let's here change illumination over to luminance. Oh, looking a bit better now. Um, glow intensity, let's try just half. That's looking good. Glow radius, let's try 10. Spreads it out a bit, thins it out. But yeah, if you just turn that off and on, you'll see that it feels like it's just blending it in a little bit, making this massive shiny object have some kind of ethereal glow to it or some sort of, or some sort of foggy environmental glow that just helps it blend in there and feel like it belongs as part of the scene. And you can see here specifically, it's just dulling those deep dark black colors to make them look way more realistic within the context of this actual scene. Now, I hope that wasn't too complicated, guys, but that is how you create that object within a plugin called Element 3D from Video Copilot, link in the description below. We're not done yet though. I just wanna do a few more things here to make sure that this fits in perfectly. If firstly, it looks a little bit too sharp for the scene, so I'm gonna add a slight blur. So right click your layer, come up to effect, uh, blur and sharpen and choose just a basic Gaussian blur and we'll just put that at blurriness two. It just dulls those sharp edges slightly and makes it just feel a little bit more at home. <laughs> Also, I'm just gonna add a quick Lumetri color onto that one and just increase the exposure, the slightest there. This is just that fine tuning that we can do just to make that pop a little bit within the scene and fit well. So that's it for Element 3D. Now let's move on to Sabre. So what Sabre is gonna allow us to do is to create this tractor beam. So it looks pretty basic just at first glance here, but that's what's gonna give us that impact to then follow up with the massive explosion that occurs when the tractor beam hits the ground. So what is Sabre and how do we create it? Well, there it is just isolated by itself and all it is is a free plugin from none other than videocopilot.net. Perfect for lightsabers or tractor beams or neon signs or any kind of glow with a hot core that you would need in any scenario. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through how to create this using the plugin called Saber. So first things, I'm gonna create a new layer, new solid, and I'm gonna make sure that it's the comp size and I'm gonna call it Saber. Okay, I'm gonna right click that layer, come to effect, video copilot and Saber. So if you don't have Sabre, it's a free plugin from Video Copilot, 100% free and downloadable from videocopilot.net. Link in below, it's from 2016. <laughs> it was made six years ago, but it's an amazing plugin, guys. Um, link in the description, grab it so that we can use it. Okay, here we have our Sabre plugin, pop that in there. I'm just gonna immediately change our glow color to red. Looks nice and evil, maybe like a dark red. It has a bunch of great presets, guys. These are all super unique. And if, so I'm gonna choose energy for this one and I'm just going to uh, change my color to be a little bit more on the red side. I'm just going to increase my core size to something like that. So I'm just gonna reduce it down slightly. Reduce, come down here to customize core and just reduce the start, uh, sorry, the end size a little bit so it's a bit skinnier at the top and a bit fatter down the bottom and that looks pretty good so if we just play that back you can see that it has sort of a natural uh flow and distortion on it already which is super cool now we want to add a bit of a flicker there so let's increase that flicker intensity to like a 50 let's see what happens what that looks like that looks pretty good on cyber come over here to your transfer mode and change that to screen 
now we can start seeing where we actually want it to be. So come up here and you can actually grab each end and just remove it, move it down slightly. So we want it to, you know, just pop out out of that end of that tractor beam and then come down like so. And now we're going to pick a point, so maybe at around um, two seconds where that tractor beam comes down, you know, it appears for the first time and comes down, down into the ground. So, so we're going to animate this, uh, this end, which is, I think in this case, we flipped it around. Yeah. So that's the core start. So at, you know, two seconds and 10 frames, we'll put a little uh, stopwatch there for core start and we'll bring it back down to two seconds and we'll drag the core start up onto itself. Make sure you keep it level there. And now if we just move that forward, we can see that we've animated the detractor beam down there. Let's just reference back to our scene here. It's quite fast. Okay. So let's come back here to our saber and we'll just press U on the keyboard to reveal any animated properties there of that layer, bring it in and we're going to make it happen much quicker. So nice and quick. And we can actually, you know, on the first keyframe, select your layer and press um, and press Alt and square open bracket, and that'll cut your layer at that exact point. So we want it to appear, and that's our tractor beam looking pretty good. All right, element 3D, done. Saber, done. Now we're going to talk about the dust wave and the explosion. So how do you tackle something like this? Big motion pictures tend to use a combination of stock footage um, and actual footage that they shoot of explosions or um, explosions created in 3D programs. For smaller scale budgets, stock footage is going to be your friend and stock footage is going to get you amazing results um, for not too much work. Obviously, you might have a friend who's a 3D wizard. Um, get in touch with them, see if they can make some 3D explosions for you. Um, but in my case, I'm going to show you my journey using uh, stock footage. So this is the site that I stumbled upon. It's called Action VFX, and you can sign up for a subscription, a bunch of different options, 15 USD a month, um, and you get five credits, so five downloads per month. That's the bottom line there, and then you can work your way up and get more downloads as you go, or you can buy um, each shot by itself, but it works out better, uh, I believe, if you subscribe. So this is full of some amazing stock elements. Um, actual flames here. We got some CGI explosions here. We got snow. We got atmospheric fog, uh, blood hits, dust explosions, actual ground fire, like everything you can imagine is available here. And it's all super high quality um, and very, very well made. So let's find the port of impact here, right there. And it's at that point that we want to bring in our dust wave. So now this element has come through in three different uh, sections. So we've got the front of the dust wave, we've got the dust wave at the back, and then we've got the shadow of the dust wave there. Um, super cool that you can download those three elements separately like that from Action VFX. Um, so make sure you take a look. So if I just type in dust wave here, there we go. So dust wave one is the one that I ended up using for this project. So moment of Im impact. Let's bring in our first element, which is our dust wave one front. And let's drop it just above the saber there. I'll make it appear like that. Let's just see what it looks like full size first. Just going to scale it down, bring it down to the shot. And you can see it lines up pretty well with the floor of the scene already. So that's good. We've chosen a good angle. So you can see it sort of starts just before the tractor beam. Let's bring that back forward like that. There we go. Like that there. That looks pretty good. Okay. What we might want to do is just scale it up a little bit more and bring it up. And just a little bit up further. Now you can see the bottom of Sabre there is sort of poking out the bottom of the of the dust explosion. So, so what you want to do is pre-compose your Sabre layer here. So control shift C and you want to move all attributes into the new composition and Sabre pre-comp like so. Okay. And then you just got to make sure that your transfer mode here is set back to screen. There we go. Now click in your pre-comp choose your rectangle tool and just draw a rough rectangle across the bottom there. 
um, change it to subtract and then just F for feather and just feather it up slightly. There you go. That has now removed that bottom section of the glow. And what we're going to do, we're just going to move up our dust wave just a few clicks up like that. Pretty happy with that. Now we'll go in here and drop in the shadow at the same spot. So what you need to make sure of is that just the scaling is the same as your other shots so 71. Make sure that's below the dust wave um, and just bring it down like so. Line them up and then just check your position as well. So these have to match. So your shadow has to match your front. So 952 and 716 scale is matched. Okay, so now I've popped that shadow in there. You can see that helps it blend into the scene quite nicely. If you want that to look even darker, you can just duplicate that shadow and makes the shadow just a little bit darker. Depending on your situation, I think <clears throat> that might work well for us in this case, so I might leave that just because of how high up in the sky the sun is. Okay, and then as well, we do want our back dust wave back which is going to be behind the beam so we'll pop it behind the beam scale again matching our other ones 71 and position matching our other ones 952 by 716 and then move that in line with where the shot begins here it all should line up quite nicely so if we turn off these front ones you can see that there's our smoke behind the tractor beam as well make them start a little bit sooner and bring them up slightly i just love the quality of these uh stock footage elements uh, as soon as i saw these i was like hot dang um obviously you can create these in programs like blender or cinema 4d or whatever but um having access to stock footage like this of this quality it just is a game changer, to be honest. So we're still working on Dust Wave 1 here. What is the major problem with this right now? Well, first of all, that dust is red or light brown. It's not uh, gray or black like this dust here. So we're going to go ahead and tint our dust. So to match it up, we're going to start with our front one here. And we're going to do choose the effect tint. And what tint does is it maps your black elements to a different color or your white elements to a different color and tints it slightly. So if we wanted that dust to be red, we could change that to red. It tints it like so. Obviously, that doesn't look any good. But what we're going to do is actually going to come in here and choose like a relatively rich brown color, almost on its way to like a reddish. That one looks pretty good there before after so it's on its way and then we're going to chuck a lumetri color on there as well we're not done yet lumetri color and this one i'm just going to use to play around a little bit further and make it match even better so i'm just gonna uh, increase the exposure slightly that's a bit too bright maybe 0.5 contrast i'm gonna increase that see how it's a little bit dull there i'm gonna increase the contrast maybe to uh, 120 looking better so those shadows in there are starting to better match the shadows out here i'm going to take the shadows down again just helping it blend in that a little bit better making the blacks a bit deeper there um, and then bring back the black even further down here so really the goal here is we're just trying to make this color match that best we can we take those two effects, turn them off, back on. Looking much better now than it did before. And then, of course, you can just apply those same two effects to your dust wave back as well. Up to you as well. You could probably tint one of the shadows or maybe you know, that, that probably looks good there. It just changes this you know, black over here to be a little bit more inclusive there of that brownish color. So that overall, if we just take a closer look at it, it looks like it has blended quite nicely into this shot. So if we just go back here and see that everything's just out of line a little bit, so we'll move it across slightly like that. Here we go. Okay, let's have a play of that. Looking pretty good. All right, so that is the dust wave element done. Now, obviously we need that explosion that you can see at the beginning here. 
just to really show that impact that we have. Um, so let's find the spot that we want it to happen. So boom, dust wave occurs and pretty close to that, we want that explosion to pop out the top um, to create that dramatic moment. So the element I use as part of the dust explosions collection, I used dust explosion number two here. So a lot, again, check this out, lots of awesome dust hits, dust explosions, some with a little bit more fire in them. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring in dust explosion two. And the first thing I'm gonna do, you can see it includes the floor there. So I'm gonna use my masking tool on the layer itself and just mask away the bottom. Bring it down a little bit there and just change that mask over to subtract. And we're gonna slot that in behind the dust wave front like so. Now obviously this dust explosion is way too big so we're gonna bring it down um, S for scale and just reduce that way down, just tuck it in there. Probably even tuck it even further, so scale it down a little bit more. Tuck it in like so, and then let's make that explosion start. So just there, bring it up slightly. A little bit more of a delay. Looking pretty good. So I probably want to leave that one that color. Um, this, more of a dust wave, that's fine. We want the dust to look like that. That explosion includes a little bit more of, you know, the deeper, darker dirt. So it makes sense that that one is maybe a bit darker than the initial dust wave that comes out. So I'm pretty happy with that. But what I'm going to do is I want to emulate that glow. So that glow that's coming down, that's going to affect the explosion. It's going to make the smoke that comes out of the explosion glow red, right? So duplicate your dust explosion and come in here and we're going to tint it drop a tint onto that top one and we're going to make the black go like a deep deep dark orange like that maybe a bit more red like that okay and then take your masking tool so your rectangle tool and just draw straight down the middle like that and change you can actually get rid of that first mask on that layer and then feather that mask so that it just surrounds that central sort of tractor beam like so. Okay, if we play that back, you can see that it just adds a nice glow to the middle of the explosion as it should make sense that you can semi see the heat and the light that's coming from that tractor beam through some of that thick smoke. If you go in there, you can, you know, blend it with the original a little bit, narrow it down just helps meld that in a little bit. Then we're gonna duplicate that one more time, just down the bottom, so duplicate the bottom one. And I'm just gonna solo these for a second. So this is our little explosion. With that bottom one, I'm just gonna turn off our uniform scaling or constrain properties on that one. I'm just gonna scale it outwards, scale it downwards, move it down slightly, right click, transform flip horizontal and what that's going to do is just give us some width to our explosion turn the opacity on that one down to maybe a 50. we've got our main dust explosion we've got the reddish one that runs right down the middle and then we've got this fatter um, scaled down explosion let's see what that looks like so you can see there that that last fat explosion it's not you can't really see it there so i'm just going to expand it out a little bit more expand it upwards and just move it up like that there we go so just add some additional little dusty elements in the background there so i'm quite happy with where we are right now that is our tractor beam done our dust wave and our dust explosion popped in there. So the next element I'm going to put in is a shock wave. So if I just scroll through here, you can see that I've got a shock wave that's not looking the best at the moment. But basically what we're trying to do is create some sort of, you know, you can just see a shock wave. It doesn't have to be perfectly detailed, but it's um, just adding that shock wave in there so that we have it. So it feels a little bit more realistic. So what I've used here is energy shock wave side one, uh, again, from Action VFX. And what I've done, I've scaled it up, I've masked out a little top section here just to get rid of that back, um, the stuff back there. We don't want that. If we look at the original here, I've added a tint just to map that blue away to more of a brownish color that the ground represents there. I've also just 
um, removed some of that saturation there and added a bit of lightness and then just dropped on some curves there just to blend it in that final amount and then last but not least I've actually mapped the opacity of it to about 30 that's all we need just that subtle blast of, of dust that occurs right when we explode so it just needs to come in a little bit later it needs to happen relatively quick there we go so again it's just a real subtle effect we don't want it to be we can even reduce the scale a little bit here we don't want it to overtake the scene it's just there showing that there's some sort of effect that this explosion is having on the environment around it all right so let's have a look at that all together looking pretty good it just fades out at the end here the opacity like so so now we're going to add some burning steel wool and the reason i use this is this right here so i saw this shot here burning steel ignition 2 and it seemed like a cool sort of ground growing around effect and so if we speed that up so if we look at it here it's like a fiery you know effect and it's growing and it's getting bigger and i looked at that and i was like cool that I can use, I can rotate it in 3D space and I can make it seem like it's surrounding the explosion and it can add, it can act as a nice additional uh, shock wave just to add to that dusty shock wave effect. So there's our burning steel wool effect. I've rotated it or I've made it a 3D layer and I've rotated it in uh, at about 265 degrees here so that it just sits on the ground plane, positioned it in just below the, um, the explosion and behind the various dust waves if we just go through here and i've actually sped it up if i right click that I come up to time and time stretch i've actually sped it up to a stretch factor of five right so normal is 100 percent. i've sped it up to five and all that's going to do is just add that additional blast in there so that's looking pretty good we've got to make sure that we screen that so change that transfer mode to screen come up here blur it slightly so we don't get too much of that fiery detail which is good but we don't necessarily need it um, and then just tint that white away to a bit of a lighter creamier brown like that get rid of that get rid of that you can see what we're doing so it's a case of experimenting with some of the elements here i just saw that element and i thought hey i can rotate that and use that in that situation that'll look cool as like a ground-based quick shock wave coming out away from the explosion so if we just play that like that looking pretty good it's fast and it fades out at the end there okay and then the last element i want to talk about here is our final dust wave so what i actually used in this case i already owned the video copilot action essentials pack so this is from way way back um, 20, uh, 2009, 2010, I believe, um, this came out. This is full of awesome explosions, um, water effects, bullet effects, blood effects, smoke, fog, etc. And one of the elements in that pack is called a dust wave. And this is what it looks like. It's just a puff of dust up in your face. And what I want that to represent is the dust popping up in front of the camera once the wave shockwave hits us so i've scaled it up quite a bit so as soon as it hits the camera you can see it just kicks up some dust there and what that also does you know in some cases some of your elements aren't going to look perfect what it does is it just helps blend everything in a little bit so shockwave hits the camera kicks up dust so let's duplicate that it'll just thicken the dust a little bit looking pretty good probably just and and then i've made it fade out at the end here just the opacity from 100 to zero um with that one you duplicate it up there you could probably just change that initial opacity to 50 just to help that look a little bit more settled let's play that one more time boom explodes so we added our dust wave which had the front back and shadow we also added our dust explosion which had a main explosion and then a uh, an explosion that took into account the red glow from the tractor beam and then just an additional scaled um, scaled explosion just to fill out the background there so we added that uh, initial large dusty shock wave we added the burning steel wool as well to add as 
to act as that ground shockwave. And then we finished off with this dust wave right at the, up at the front of the camera once the shockwave hits the camera. That's compositing, guys. That's a bunch of uh, different elements, bringing them together, melding them together to create what this would look like in reality. Explosion, dust wave, shock wave, and dust kicking up in front of the camera. Alrighty, so now we're gonna talk about optical flares. You've heard me talk about it a lot um, in every episode of what we've gone through so far, but what we're gonna use in this case is optical flares to, to blend in the overall uh, scene here, just like that. Um, and then also to introduce the tractor beam. So we have this sort of charging up light that charges up that bottom tractor beam, and then boom, out comes the saber light, um, and that fades away. So that gives us a little bit of an introduction of that light, right? We don't really have anything happening. It serves as just a little moment within the scene uh, of anticipation. Something's coming from there. So how do we do that? We go layer, new solid, and we'll call this optical flares. Make it black, make sure it's comp size and okay. And we're gonna put that just on top of our Saber pre-comp there. Uh, right click that layer, come up to effect, video copilot, optical flares. Um, and what you wanna do is change the transfer mode of that to screen. Position that flare over the top of the tractor beam there. Come to options and let's choose a flare. So the one I used in this case was I believe JJ. So the JJ Abrams inspired one. I might actually change things up here. I'm gonna pick this tactical light one. I'm just gonna change the, the color to red orange. If there's anything that's too blue, I'm just gonna make sure that it's a bit, matches the colors a bit better. That looks pretty good. Let's just press okay on that. That looks real nice, real sci-fi vibes. It's gonna charge up and it's gonna be at its brightest just as the tractor beam comes down, okay? So let's, let's choose the spot just as the tractor beam comes down, click on your optical flares and let's increase our brightness there to 170 and we'll put the stopwatch on there and we'll work our way back to mid shot here and just go zero. Loads in and boom, tractor beam comes in. So as we can see here, I might just want to move this down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's a better spot. So from nothing, it starts loading up and then boom, tractor beam goes down. Then press U on your optical flares layer just to see what you've animated so far. Make another keyframe on brightness and then just make the brightness slowly fade down to like a 20 over time there. Let's see what that looks like. So we have it loading up and then boom, tractor beam comes down and it fades out slowly over time. I really love optical flare, guys. Just look at what that looks like. It's giving a real cool sci-fi vibe. You can even move the tail of it, so the center position around as well. So you can move that flare in various places off to the right slightly maybe, that looks pretty good. Now we're just gonna add another one, just to, well, we'll rename this one optical flares beam. And then we'll duplicate that and we'll call it optical flares enviro. I'm just gonna add an overall sort of light. So come in here and we can actually build this from scratch. So clear all and all we're gonna take is the glow, global color of that just to be a nice sort of pale white. Okay, and that's it. So if we just drag that one around, you can see it's quite bright, but all we're gonna use it for is to act as a bit of a an overall painter of light, right? So we're gonna maybe even put it up here to sort of act as where the sun would be. And we're just gonna delete that keyframe we had on there from before and just increase the brightness there and take it away so we don't see the core of it. And if you turn that off and on, you can see that it just paints the whole scene with a bit of light. Um, it just blends everything together, helps meld it all, makes it look real good. And the last little step you need to do there is make sure to just drag it above all of your dust waves and explosions. That way it includes those items as well. Obviously I've spoken about this uh, plenty of times, optical flares available on videocopilot.net. Uh, make sure you grab the pro flare bundles because you get the pro presets with it as well.
So just a quick recap of what we've done so far. We we chose our scene. We created our um, spacecraft in Element 3D. We brought it in, created our tractor beam, and then created our explosion and dust waves. We then slapped on some optical flares to create that key moment down on the tractor beam and also to paint the entire scene with a bit of sunlight. So what do we do next? We're going to add handheld camera movement um, as well as some micro jitters from the explosion as well as that initial shock wave on the camera that you would have if you get hit by an explosion. We're going to do some last little color grading and adding some noise just to blend it all together. And then I'll just quickly touch on some uh, final touches uh, with Lumen. But where do we go from here? How do we make this all a little bit more manageable? Well, I'm just gonna make sure that my comp is fully selected here. And what I'm gonna do is render this out. So I come up here to composition, add to render queue. Make sure that I select a preset that is high quality. So QuickTime and generally Apple ProRes 422 HQ or even 4444 will be your highest quality. Pick that one. Um, okay, call that master, I'll render that out. Just a quick note as well, if you're having any issues with how your Element 3D item looks, go onto your Element 3D plugin, come down to output, and you can increase these numbers. So multi-sampling and super sampling, you can make four. Um, you can also then click enhanced multi-sampling. That'll make your object look real nice, real crisp. If there's any issues with the edges that you're seeing, you want it to be perfect, choose those options. They are obviously a little bit more processor intensive, so your render will be a little bit slower. Alrighty, so I've brought in that shot I just rendered. I'm gonna drag it into a new composition. Here we have it, our completed shot, initial shot. Now we're gonna see how that we can add some handheld movement to this. So I'm gonna create a new null layer, new null, and I'm gonna call this my master null. I'm gonna press P on the keyboard. Um, make a keyframe at the beginning of the composition and make one at the end. Select both keyframes and then bring up your Wiggler window. So if you can't see that, come over here to Window and select Wiggler. So Wiggler helps you just add random keyframes uh, over a certain time, at a certain speed and of a certain magnitude. So those are our two keyframes here. Make sure they're both selected. If you can't select them both easily, just click on the position wording, that'll select both. And we're gonna do it every um, two, so no, every second. We're gonna make it move at a magnitude of two. Let's see what that looks like. Apply that, you see here if it's created um, some keyframes here, and you can see that our null object there is moving. So what we're gonna do is tie our main shot to the null object. Just use the pick whip or use the drop down menu here to pick your master null. If we have a look at what that does, that now makes our shot move slightly by handheld, but it's not looking very good. So I'm just going to, let's go six. This should be good, come on. Okay, not bad. So the edges are showing up. So what you need to do is just scale in your main shot just a little bit like so, probably just 5%, and that should be enough to cover for any handheld movement how it moves around. Okay, so we've added just that initial handheld shake. Now we're gonna press Shift R on that layer and do the same for rotation. So first keyframe there, last keyframe there. Click the word rotation so both keyframes are selected. And this might be slightly different, right? So let's start with a three magnitude there and see the rotation that it adds there. See, a little bit too much in that case. You gotta be a little bit more gentle. So let's go one magnitude, but I increase the frequency. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's adding a nice little handheld look to it. It's just a case of playing around with these keyframes. That looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna stick with that for now. Um, but yeah, you can use the Wiggler on anything in scale, rotation, position, um, up to you. So what I need is for that initial hit and shockwave, and as soon as that shockwave hits, I wanna add some hectic movement. So I might just actually increase this to 110, this main shot, there we go. And as soon as that shockwave hits the camera, boom, I wanna then create some chaos. So let's come down here and let's just move that keyframe back a little bit to there. So let's start with position. So as soon as that hits me, I wanna maybe be like, whoa, like the camera gets oh, moved up a little bit, right? So let's change that position and make it go up as far as we can go to the black shows, so there. 
right? And with that first keyframe, just before that, I'm just going to um, make it go as far down as possible so that it's a nice kick up, right? So let's see what that looks like. Boom, just that initial boom. So whoa, up and then you'd probably go straight back down. So we can copy that keyframe there. Boom, like that. Up and down, not bad. Okay, and then with the rotation, we can probably move these keyframes around a bit as well. So with that initial explosive movement up, I might just move my rotation there so that I'm, what have I got? Minus 0.7. And then when it goes down, I could maybe go the opposite direction. Again, be careful of your black limits there. I'll delete that keyframe there. So you just want to create a little moment of chaos for when that explosion occurs. So let's see what that looks like. Change the speed at which this pull up occurs and make it happen a little bit quicker. There we go. That looks pretty cool shockwave in so if you want this to be a little bit more hectic you probably have to scale in even further to like 115 just want to be careful you don't want to push too far just with the quality of your shot obviously the reason i rendered it is just to help with the processing right if you want to keep your if you want to take your whole scene and put it in here and have everything still be processing then there'll be less of a loss of quality but i find that this is pretty good you know for this use case so i've scaled in a little bit so i might just push that positioning up even more there we go happy with the timing and that initial jolt all right so now i also want to add some micro jitters so if you've ever seen saving private ryan <laughs> they used a drill on the side of the lens to get that really you know shaky handheld look you know all the explosions and everything going on I want that handheld jittery look there as well, just as the explosion hits there, just to add an additional bit of chaos. So what I'm gonna do is create a new null, layer new null, and just call that jitter. And attach your master null to the jitter. And then once that explosion hits there, I'm just gonna create a keyframe for position. And let's you know, have it last quite a bit Let's actually change it to where it hits just when the when that initial shockwave hits the camera. It's right there. And let's have it keep going till about there. So select those two there. And what we want to do here is your frequency needs to be really high. So let's say 20 and magnitude 0.5. Let's try that. So see it's created a bunch of really tight knit keyframes there. So let's see what that looks like. Not enough. Let's try magnitude of three. Well, that's looking pretty good. We don't want it to go on for too long. So let's see here. Yeah, so at about this point here, I'd probably start deleting some of these keyframes. And then once you get towards the end here, you can delete a bunch more, make the gaps bigger and bigger. So let's see what that looks like. That just has that initial jitter at the at the beginning there. And we can actually select these, hold Alt, and you can spread them out a little bit. It's a nice additional you know, shake there. It's very subtle, but it just adds that chaos to your scene and helps you sell it a little bit more. So guys, we're talking about the final touches now, just to give those last little details on there and help you make your complete scene. So I've created a new uh, adjustment layer here and I've called it effects and color. What I'm gonna do is pop on some Lumetri color on there. And all I've done is I've chosen one of the creative looks. And in my case, I chose SL Iron LDR, but there are a bunch of cool creative looks here that you can go through. It might suit your scene or whatever, just have a play around. That adds a nice little lick of color over there that I think blends it in real good. 
And then I've just added some noise over the whole scene. So as I've spoken about before in my previous tutorials, adding noise on there will just blend different elements together. So if you've got an image that didn't have much noise and you've got a 3D object that doesn't have much noise, just chuck some noise over there to blend it all nicely together. Or if you've got a photo that's quite noisy and a 3D object that has no noise, you can add some noise to the 3D object to then make it match your backplate or your photo that you're trying to composite it with. Now I've spoken about these guys before as well, Big Films, they have this pack called uh, Prism or Lumen. So Lumen and Prism both give cool bokeh or you know light bleeding effects that you can add on top of your scene. So, what so from the Lumen pack I've got the 02 Shine 11 and I've taken it here and I'm going to use it just for this moment where the explosion occurs and the it's sort of blocking that beam and it just might cause it might I don't know if it would but it might cause this little effect to occur right let's have a look what that looks like and again I'm just adding items on top that'll just help blend the scene in together distract your audience from anything that might not be as high quality as some of your other elements and just bring it all together oh make sure your adjustment layer is the length of your composition I'll just bring it in below the adjustment layer there. Looking pretty good. Now, something I forgot to mention, you need to come down here to your shot and turn on motion blur. Make sure your global motion blur switch is on and then you'll see that as soon as that initial camera move happens, everything motion blurs and blends it in real nice. Let's see what that looks like. Handheld, boom, explosion occurs, but a motion blur. Add that lumen, looking real nice. We've hit the hour mark, but we're at the end. My only final little bit of advice would be to add some sound effects and of course the explosion sound. Let's just have a quick look of what I've created here. Nice beefy explosion, quite bassy and a bit of a wind sound. Just brings your scene alive and adds that final touch to it. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I've been waiting for part four. Um, took us an hour to get through it, but I really hope you got something out of it. Uh, I really hope you learned some compositing techniques. Yeah, I really like the progression that we've taken from those handheld shots through tracking in Mocha, through optical flares, through uh, keying, luma mats, all the way through now to using an image, um, an element 3D. It's been a blast. Uh, of course, there's two more parts, part five and part six. Um, I'm actually really excited. Part five is actually this same scene, but a secondary shot. I'll show you how to composite that. Um, and then the last part is actually really fun. We're gonna get involved in Photoshop and make this city collapse. I've had a great time, guys. Let me know in the comments if you liked it. Let me know what you'd wanna learn. I think uh, I really enjoyed this format of uh, breaking down a scene over a bunch of tutorials. Can't wait to dive into the next two parts. Thank you and see you next time. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you like what you see, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Uh, let me know what you want to see or what you want to learn. I'm um, going to make sure you've hit that subscribe button so you'll get notified when I drop each one of these new tutorials. Thanks guys.